Right, so 7.20, I think we should start. And you guys online, can you confirm that you can hear me well? Anyone online, can you confirm that you can hear me well? Yes. All right, very good. So my computer screen looks so weird because how small it is. Okay, let's try here. So you're gonna have the the lecture first, and then we're gonna take a break around eight forty-five, and we will take. 30, 15 minutes and we'll start the exam exactly at, at nine o'clock, okay? And then it will be for one hour. So the exam is already uploaded, but it's not accessible until uh, nine. And so that's what we will do at nine o'clock, all right? That projector will get connected to uh, my screen. Make it so weird. Let me try to adjust the resolution a little bit. Right here. Let's try. Okay. That is better. Okay. You guys can still see, right? Right, so last time we were talking about the, the solar angle and we said that the ultimate goal of this is to be able to, is to be able to find out the location of the sun in that dome. So the ultimate goal of last week lecture and the way that we're gonna ask about it in the exams and the homework is, I will tell you where is the sun and you will tell me this angle and that angle, okay? So now sometime it, it, the question is not as dark as this, it's not like, where is the sun? But the question would be, if you have a solar panel on top of your roof, huh? or like you, you are you're having a solar panel on your RV, you are camping huh? and it's Sunday at 3 p.m., what is the best orientation for the solar panel? Well, that has to do with where is the sun? And so once I find out that, for example, the sun is 45 degree from the south, like this azimuth angle, the solar azimuth angle, AS. Huh? If I find out that this is 45 degree, plus 45 degree, so we said plus when it's in the evening, when it's going to the west. The equation told me AS is 45 degree. Where should I put my solar panel on top of my RV? Should I make it facing south or east or west, or should I make it facing 45 degree, just like the sun? I should make it exactly where the sun is, right? So then that angle become the angle of, if you're gonna build a tracking system for the, for the solar panel on top of whatever, in the highway or in the, then it should be AS. The AS of the sun should be the AS of the solar panel, right? Except that for the solar panel, we don't call it AS. We call it just A, so A, Without the subscript S, that is the azimuth angle of the collector, of the solar heater, of the VV panel, or whatever source or place that you want to collect the sun on. So A should be AS for optimum, for optimum basically uh, reception on this thing. Now, the the tilt, we need the, the tilt of the plate. So if the plate is completely horizontal, facing up to the sky, obviously the tilt is zero. It's not tilted is on the floor. And that's the way they put it in big complex, like, like if Walmart wanna put like solar panel on top of his roof, chances are he's just gonna build it flat all over the, 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 the thing. And if, if the wall is like vertical, the tilt angle is 90, okay? And you have between zero and 90. 
30 degree, 40 degree. So again, for optimum huh, reception on the solar panel, if I, on, he said, calculate the angle, the tilt angle and azimuth angle of the plate for your PV panel on your RV this weekend huh, at 3 p.m. And you calculated this, it turned out to be 45 degree. And you calculated this angle, alpha. What did we call alpha altitude, solar altitude angle? Alpha turned out to be 50 degree. Okay, alpha is 50 degree from the ground. You go up from the ground and you see the sun 50 degree. What should be the tilt angle of the PV panel? It should be alpha or should be 90 minus alpha. Ninety minus alpha. So why ninety minus alpha? So that they are normal to each other. So if the sun is coming at fifty, you go at forty. You tilt at forty. If the sun coming at ninety, you go to zero, so that you can get the sun. Right? If the sun is zero, you go vertical. You go ninety. So the plate, or the collector, or the BV panel, tilt angle, and we give it the symbol beta. The tilt angle of the plate is 90 minus alpha. And the solar azimuth angle of the sun is exactly the azimuth angle of the plate or the collector. The AS is A. If the sun is coming from south, I need to be facing south. If the sun is coming a little bit from the, like coming from the east, the plate needs to go to the east, facing the east, All right? And, and so those are the two angle, two equations that we talked about, and we explain how we can calculate L and delta and HS, right? That, that's what we did. And we said the, how the, the solar time is a little bit different, not a little bit, it actually can be as big as 20 minutes uh, difference, 15 minutes for the equation of time, and then you have also the correction for the standard longitude and longer longitude. Are you living at 90 or 75 or 105 or 120? Those are the lucky people. 75 and 90 and 105 and 120, people living at that longitude, they are lucky because their watch match their time, standard time. But people who live off those lines, like us in Tulsa, and we are 95, we are adjusting our clock on some place in Arkansas at 90. We have five degree off. And this five degree off multiplied by four mean that we are always 20 minutes ahead of time. We think it's noon, but it's not. We still 20 minutes when we come in front of the sun and we have our solar beam, okay? So because of the, of the symmetry of, of that curve, huh? when the sun come and, and go back like this, so that this is, you can just plot half of it. And the other half is basically exactly the same. Of course, they plot half of it because, because uh, this is based on solar noon. I'm sorry, on solar time. If this was in southern time, it will not be symmetric. All right, so B shifts it a little bit, but if you base it on solar time, the sun will always reach the max at 12 solar time, right? And if it starts here at seven, it will go back at seven, okay? So what are we seeing here? This is alpha against the azimuth angle, solar azimuth angle, AS, okay? And so you can see how in the, in the, in the winter, the sun maximum alpha, which happened at solar noon is like 30 something. For, for what? This place, huh? Missouri State University. And in the summer, the maximum alpha go up to 80 degree. All right? So right now, back to this example of you have a PV panel and you wanna set it for optimum, huh? optimum orientation. You realize that in the winter, you need to tilt it more or less. Your tilt angle of the BV panel on top of your roof, should it be more or less in the winter? More, because this is 30 
Uh, let's call it 35 or something, 33. Then I need 90 minus 33. And in the summer, I only need to tilt it only 10 degrees because the sun is so high, right? So now the question is, so year long, if I, I, I don't have the, the time to go to my roof every month and adjust the angle. If I wanna just leave it year long at one tilt angle and one azimuth angle, what it should be? First, the azimuth angle. What is the azimuth angle of my collector if I just don't wanna touch it? Should it be east, west, south? It should be south. It should be facing south because this way you get half of the day and half of the day symmetric on your planet, right? Very good. And the other question, which is a little bit hard to, to observe from the graph, you actually need to calculate for every single month, which is what is the optimum tilt angle? Just year long. And by the way, the azimuth angle, you, you can confirm this by just going on the highway. And if there is any sign with a speed limit that's powered by a BV panel, watch where they are putting it and you will see that they are making it facing south. So the panel should always be facing south. Now, what was the tilt angle? Did anyone observe that while in all your driving on the highway? Did you ever notice what's the tilt angle angle on those? Usually they have only one BV panel powering the whole thing, right? One blue thing sitting on top of the sign. That, that is a really good guess. You have a very good eye. So it turned out that the optimum angle is your latitude. Where do you live? Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's your latitude? 36. Your optimum angle year long is 36. You live in, in, in Chicago. What's your latitude? 50 something or so. Or so. What, then you, you tilt it at 50. That is optimum by calculation, year long. But if you have the time and effort or this is a big field, you're not just doing one BV panel for a small RV or a small sign, but it's really a, a lot of money that's gonna be lost. You have to adjust monthly and you tilt more in the winter and you tilt less in the summer, okay? But if you just wanna leave it and forget it all year long, it should be latitude tilt. The latitude of the city, that should also be the tilt of the plate, year long. All right. So an, another way to plot this graph is this solar solar chart. So what is solar chart? Imagine you are here, you are, you're standing in the middle. And this is kind of, you think it's the track of the sun uh, on top of your head, but it's, it's not exactly. So see, th those circles are the maximum, this is the alpha. So with, when the sun is like here at this place, and so those are like, Winter, you know, spring, spring and and, uh, and and fall would be here and the summer would be here. Okay. So when, when the sun, when the, the sun is here, that means that the azimuth angle, the solar azimuth angle is minus 90. It's exactly at the east. And the alpha is, that's the big circle. The big circle is zero. See, it's zero, 10, 20, all the way to 90. So that means this is sunrise. And the sun go in during the day, get closer to the south and to head the south, that is solar noon. And when you read what is this circle, what this alpha, huh? it's what? It's 90, 80, 70, 60. So it's like 65 or something. So, so this is the maximum alpha that they have, okay? So those chart, this kind of chart tell you where is the sun, how high it will get, okay? And as you go north up to the 66.5 or higher, you notice know one amazing thing. Look at what happened at 66 north. So my sister live in, in Alberta, in University of Calgary. So over there, it's like really, really long, long day. Not as long as this, but it's a really long day. And so when you hit 66.5, what do you see? What does that mean? Yeah. 
when the circle never hit zero, the circle is always above zero. What does that mean? The sun is always up. The sun never set during the summer. And of course, as you go north, more than 66.5, that persists even more, right? And, and look at the winter. The sun show up for one hour. So just like, you know, they get the sun at 11 a.m. and sunset 1 p.m., sorry, end of the day, go home, all right? So that this, this lens is basically, uh, the, the interesting, no matter where you live, those graphs are always anchored here at zero and zero for the spring and the fall. So 21st of March and 21st of, of uh, September, the, the sun always come at six o'clock solar time. The sun always come exactly from the east. So if you are wondering where is the east in your place and you don't have a, a you don't have a compass. Woke up in the spring 21st. It's coming 21st of March, 6 a.m. You'll find out where, this, where is the east. So why is that? Free homework problem if you tell me why. Everyone in the world, whether you are living at the equator, living in Tulsa, living in Alberta, Canada, 21st of March, everyone will have the sun coming from exactly the east. And everyone will have the sunrise exactly at 6 a.m. Okay. No, no, keep it, keep it for the, you send it in the email, you get free homework. Send it to me by email, you get a free homework. See, 66, huh? they, they still have the east, exactly the location for the sunrise at the spring. Okay. So that, that's basically the lecture last time. All right, now, now equipped with the angle, equipped with the angle, now we need to know how much radiation is falling in our collector or our solar heater in our PV panel. We need to know the joules. Okay, we need, we know the sun, we need to know the joules now. How many joules are gonna hit us? All right, so this is the part when again we say, you know, in the winter, sun is low, you need to tilt higher. In the summer, the sun is high, alpha is high. You need to tilt less to be optimal for it, okay? So now there are table like this that, that will tell you, so this is, this is done for each, uh, for each latitude. Okay, for each latitude with a clear sky. So I have one student that he's doing research in solar boiling of water. And so just actually last week, he was using this table to figure out how much radiation will actually fall in our collector sitting in still water on top of the lab over there. And I, I told him, no, why no? This table will not work because this table is clear. No, no, he used the right latitude. He used exactly latitude of still water. But this is clear sky insulation. This is not taking into account. So this, this chart, and I will show you where it's coming from in a minute. This table and the equation that it represents would be the same for anyone sitting at that latitude. And if you remember the map that we saw last week, Arizona is the same latitude, more or less like, like Oklahoma, but we don't give the same sun. Why? Because we got rain, we got cloud cover, right? Humidity is different, the atmosphere block more. So this is again, the clear sky. So nothing is standing between you. You do this in New Mexico and Arizona, but you are not gonna get this in Mississippi or, right? So people, you need to, to take, if you really want accurate numbers, you need to do measurements from the station sitting in the airport in Tulsa. There are, so there, the, the, 
the earth table you can access it on the internet for any city you can see exactly the radiation in the last five years or ten years for Tulsa Oklahoma how much radiation was coming every single month right but but what what we get from those things is the you know the you get the the the, the physics you get the symmetry look why how like zero up here and zero up here uh, and only radiation during uh, those hours. So what does that mean? It means that in the summer, you get very long day. And in the winter, like Jan or December, you don't get sun until 8 a.m. Right? So that is a short day. See how the short day? And this is a long day. Also, this there are two numbers over here, normal and horizontal. Horizontal is understood. The radiation on the horizontal surface means the radiation on the road, the radiation on a flat roof. That is a horizontal surface. Okay? And so those numbers are weak, small. Look, 16 compared to 129, 38 compared to 143. So the radiation on a flat surface, horizontal surface, is very small compared to normal radiation. What is normal radiation? Someone who's holding a collector like this in front of the sun. Okay, where is the sun here? Okay, where is the sun here? So that is like a 2D tracking system. So he's always moving with A equal AS and he's always using tilt angle that's 90 minus alpha. Sun come up, let's go. So that is the normal addition. That is the maximum addition you can get. <coughs> the only way to get more addition than this is, huh? <coughs> I can't hear you. If you are like, what can get more radiation than normal radiation? Like someone sitting on a 2D tracking system, how can you get radiation more than that? Get outside the atmosphere. The only thing is like, let's jump even above the atmosphere, right? And you jump above the atmosphere and you get, you get what this, those guys, let's see the maximum here, like nine, 900, huh? 939, 939 watt per meter square. 1,000 watt per meter square, 1,000 watt per meter square is called one sun. One sun is 1,000 watt per meter square. And so the BV panel that we can buy right now from Lowe's and Home Depot, when they say this BV panel will give you 300 watt of electricity, if you read the blueprint or like a small font, it's say like at one sun. Like you give me one sun, 1,000 watt per meter square of light on me, I will give you on my wire 300 watt. So obviously the efficiency is 30%. You give me 1,000, I will give you my, my 300 watt. Okay. So, so what, it's really nice. One sun is exactly 1,000 watt per meter square. So if you go to outside, like the BV panel on the International Space Station are getting more than one sun. They're getting 1,300 and something watt per meter square. But we, we get this reduction huh? because of our atmosphere. And the, the more you go north, the more the, the, the sun goes through the atmosphere, the more it will be scattered, All right? Very good. So, So horizontal surface flat on the on the on the roof, right? And obviously a horizontal surface does not have tilt angle. I mean his tilt angle is zero. And his azimuth angle doesn't really matter. There is no such thing as what is the azimuth angle of the horizontal surface? Right? I mean, it doesn't matter whether he's looking south or east, he's just a flat piece of paper. But once you tilt, you will end up having beta and you will end up having azimuth angle, right? And it's same sign exactly. If you go west, it's plus. When you go east, it's minus. So a plate with A equal minus 90, that's facing east. A plate with A equal plus 90, that is facing west, okay? So the reason why people up north don't get as much is because of this, because the sun goes to the atmosphere and it starts to scatter, okay? 
and that's why the, the sun is, the dome on top of us is blue. I mean, once you leave the atmosphere, you look to the sky and it's all black. The reason why the sky, our sky here in the earth is blue is because that dome scatter the light of the sun and the easiest light to get scattered is the blue. Okay, that's why you see the dome completely blue. And when, when the sun go to the west, so to the sun sunset, what happened? Alpha become so small. And when alpha becomes so small, the sun has to go really long distance before it hits you. And, and that's why in the sunset, all the light gets scattered, not just the blue, the blue and then the, the yellow and the green and the or everything gets scattered. And the only thing that survive is the red. And that's how you can actually see the sunset is really red because only the red make it to you, okay? That, that sounds very impressive when I told my wife, when we, she was still my fiance, I told her that, she said like, I am really smart. I guess that helped a little bit in getting the deal done. So the red is the last, the last one to get scattered and that's why the sunset is red and the blue is the easiest to scatter and that's why it's completely blue most day. Now, the, the part that gets scattered, at the end of the day, he will still make it to you. I mean, if I block the sun, here is the sun, I'm gonna block it. I still get light from the dome. So the part that's coming from the dome is called the diffused light. And the part that is coming directly from the beam, that is a direct radiation. And you add the two of them together, you get the global radiation. Okay, and so those table, they are representing the, the global radiation. Okay, actually this one is direct. This table has direct, see? Direct. So the, the direct is actually more useful than the diffuse. Although both of them make it at the end to the collector and you receive both of them. Those are photon that when they hit the BV panel, hopefully will make electricity jump from the other side as we will see next class. But the direct radiation is nicer because because it has one direction and can I can reflect him to the central tower. In a solar thermal power plant when there's one big tower and all those mirrors are serving him, those mirrors can only send the direct radiation. The diffuse radiation coming from different angle will never make it to the to the tower, okay? Also that we will see the picture of the parabolic trough, which is like just like a, a trough where the pipe is in the middle. So for this guy to work, you need to know exactly the direction of the sun so that you adjust that angle and you made all the tradition go to the pipe and make it really hot. That also will not work with the diffuser dish, right? So the, the map also that we saw last time, when they said concentrating solar radiation, that was the direct, right? So if you remember the, the first map last week, this one, concentrating solar resources. So concentrating because that's the direct radiation. Again, because they know that is like more useful than the, the diffuse that you will get, okay? The third one that actually, so there is direct diffuse and there is also, what, what do you think there is? How could the sun come to you? Direct from the sun, diffuse from the dome and what else is there? It's very little and it's not always there, but it does exist. Reflected radiation, yes. And that could be a big deal for our building here in, in the HRC with a huge, huge plaque parking lot in front of us, absorbing all this and sending it to us. So you are, you are sitting in front of a solar 10 uh, thingy, right? Or like a reflecting bull. You have a reflecting bull and the sun hitting it and coming to you. Okay, one, I think I remember one day that winter I was, uh, it was very cold, but my daughter, she's doing like cookie, the Girl Scout cookie and we have to wake up very early before the other Girl Scouts start selling their cookies. And 
I was walking with her and it was very cold and suddenly I felt very warm and like why it's so warm and I noticed the sun was hitting the mirror, not the mirror, just the window on the, the, the house I'm standing in front of and that radiation come toward me and it make me feel very warm, of course, because it was very, very cold. So that little bit, but what I'm trying to say is that sometimes the reflected radiation just from a, from, the, from a window or something make a big difference. All right, but it's not always there, right? It needs to require. So now the tables huh, that we have access to have direct huh, on normal or horizontal, normal or horizontal. So now the question is how much is coming on my, on my collector sitting at facing south and tilted at, you know, whatever, 36, because they're moving in Tulsa. How much is coming on me, right? So how do I do this? So when, when, when the sun come again, three o'clock next weekend, uh, and it's like this much AS and this much alpha, and you go to that table, and let's assume this table is for Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you'd say, well, what uh, in, in February, how much is gonna be at, uh, at uh, 3 p.m.? And they tell you in Tulsa, March 30, March 3 p.m., the average should be 852. Okay, 852, 3 p.m., March, the average is, of course they are doing it from the, the, sorry, the average of the months, but let's just be happy with that number. 852 watt per meter square. So that is if someone is sitting with 2D tracking system, he will get this 830, right? But how about my plate that is facing not the sun? My plate, I'm just gonna leave it all year long facing south at 36. So we need to know in order to find out how much of that 80, 850, of course, we're gonna take a fraction of it, not all of it, right? So to find out that fraction, we need this angle. This angle is not in our textbook, okay? But this angle is very important and that's why you are gonna use it from this slide, in case, actually this slide, sorry. This equation, equation 915. If we have a homework problem, or something, we have to use this equation. And I wrote it again here in blue because this is a very small font. This is the equation to calculate what theta i. So what is theta i? It's the angle between the, the sun beam and this n hat. What is n hat? Normal to the plate. So if you find out this angle, okay, and let's call this angle from the drawing here like 30 degree then that normal radiation that you can get from tables, that 852 watt per meter square, you will only get 852 times cosine theta i. Okay, so cosine theta i multiplied by the normal radiation, that's what you will receive on your plate. So your best interest to, is to make theta i how much? Your best interest, you want your cosine theta i to be one so that you can get all the normal radiation. So that's why you want theta i actually to be zero. You wish theta i is always zero. And you can do that if you keep moving with the sun. If you make a s and a the same, and you make beta 90 minus alpha, your theta i will be zero. But if theta i is not zero, bad luck, you're gonna get cosine whatever the theta i is. If theta i is 10, you're gonna get cosine 10. If theta i is 90, which is the worst case scenario, imagine if theta i is 90, what does that mean? It means yeah. that the, the plate is parallel to the sun. That's why the normal to the plate is 90 degree with the sun. So what's cosine 90? Zero. Zero, excellent. And you'll get zero. Of course, if the plate <laughs> is parallel to the sun, the sun will never hit the plate, just will go through a like tangent to it, right? So how do we calculate cosine theta i, actually theta i or cosine theta i, this equation? 
what is this equation? Sine alpha, cosine beta, plus cosine alpha, sine beta, cosine A minus AS. Okay, so there are two terms, this guy and this guy. What is A? The plate, azimuth angle. What's AS? The sun, azimuth angle. And so, of course, if A equal AS, that's great. Huh? If the sun and the plate are all coming from the same direction, you get cosine zero over here and that's one. You get rid of this guy. I become sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. Okay. So the, the rest of this equation, he's just showing you like special cases, how this equation will become a little bit simple. I don't think we should really worry about it. I think our mind, we should just stick, here's our equation. We put the number, we get the theta i. But he's just saying, what if the beta equals zero? That is a big deal because if beta equals zero, sine zero is zero, you only get this. And it become, cosine beta is actually, is gonna be one because beta is zero. So for a horizontal surface, cosine theta i is sine alpha. Beta is the tilt angle of the plate. Yes, I want you to memorize those numbers, right? Because I don't think you can find it in the book. That's why you need to memorize what's beta. You should see that sketch over here? How beta is the tilt angle of the plate. So. Dr. Salam, I'm able to see only half of the screen that you are sharing. I mean, is there- Where where do you finish? Where does the screen finish? Let me stop sharing and let's share again. Let's see if things improve. Share. How about now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so you didn't see all this, only half of it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm really sorry. I'm happy you got it better. All right, so, so we were saying that we need this equation to figure out the angle between the sunbeam and the normal to the plate. We plug those number alpha, there is an equation for alpha, we saw it. Beta, that's the tilt plate, the tilt of the plate or the collector. Alpha, there is again equation we know about this. Beta, that's the tilt of the plate and E, that's the plate Azimuth angle, which way is the plate is looking at? Is he looking south, east, west? That's his azimuth angle. And AS, that's the sun, azimuth angle, and there's equation for it. Questions? All right. Very good. So, so here is the example. He would say a normal beam of radiation has a flux of 350, 350 watt per meter squared. That is the normal radiation. Are you going to get this? Only if you are normal to the sun, only if you have A and beta optimized such that you are normal to the sun. But in case you are not, you're gonna get only cosine theta of that 350. So the ultimate equation is this, I beta or the tilted radiation is I normal multiplied by cosine theta I. Make sense? And cosine theta I will come from this equation, this new equation. So to fill those number, you need to read the problem then. He said, well, what is the flux reaching a solar surface facing due south? Facing due south, that means azimuth angle zero, facing south, the plate is facing south. And tilted, facing south, and tilted south by 25, and tilted south by 25 degrees. So he's saying that he's going up 25 degrees. So beta is 25 at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. means our angle is minus 15, assuming that this is the solar time, not the standard time. If it was a standard time, we use this big equation. Four multiplied by solar standard longitude minus local longitude plus the E, right? Yes, if he didn't, and, and you, you have the right to, to make sure that the question is clear. So whether in class or later when you graduate, when someone tell you, 
calculate this for us at 11. You, you need to ask them, you mean this or this? Standard time or solar time? Or, or day saving time? What time is that? Summer Celeste. So the Summer Celeste mean Delta is plus 23.45. Does this make sense? That's the maximum Delta you can get, plus 23.45. At 42 North latitude, that means L, the latitude angle is 42. Okay. Questions. Why, why do we need it, the latitude angle? For what? Anyone? Why did we need the latitude angle? To calculate the alpha and the A, right? A, S and alpha, both of them, the solar azimuth angle and the solar altitude angle require L, delta, and H. Latitude, day, and hour. Okay? So, so he blocked the numbers, huh? and, and again, look at this. The ultimate equation is, is basically this. After he calculates it, I to be 15.5, he said, well, now the, the tilt, the radiation of the tilt plate is the 350, the normal multiplied by cosine theta I. So he get only a fraction of it, 337. Why? Because he have 15 degree between him and the sun. Okay, had he had zero degree between him and his, the sun, he will get the normal radiation. Good. Good, good, good. So, so this, what we did with our equation here, huh? sometimes the, the table are nice to us and they actually do it for selected angle. So south facing surface, huh? an angle with the horizontal. So he's showing it to you for 22, 22, Tilt angle 32, 42, 52, 90. But if you have the equation in your hand, you can tilt any normal radiation huh? to those by just doing cosine theta i. Okay. So now look at this unit PTU, PTU hour per square foot. So the radiation is in what per meter square? So in English unit, it's meter square, square foot. And the watt, which is joule per second, they call it BTU hour. So BTU hour mean BTU per hour. Huh? So it's still power. It's not energy, it's still power. It's not PTU, it's BTU hour, which is really, I mean, a better name for it is BTU per hour. But I mean, BTU per hour per square foot is just like too much. Okay. Very good. So, I mean, obviously we can, uh, we can also see how the, the radiation change from Jan to February to March, you know, the, you, the normal radiation is getting bigger and bigger as you are moving toward the summer, right? From Jan to February to March. Okay. And he's also saying what we already know, this sketch I was trying to show that how when the, the the sun is low, you need higher tilt. And when the sun is high, you need lower tilt. And, and here, if you are tracking, where is the maximum radiation? Of course, maximum radiation is normal. Maximum radiation is if the plate is always normal to the sun, that's the maximum radiation. But then what's the second best? You will see how 52 huh, did the best among all those angle when it was January and then February, the 42 did better. And March, 32 did better. And as, as you go more and more toward the summer, the horizontal will do better, right? Not to be horizontal because you are not at that place, but, but you tilt less and less and you will do better for that month. Year long, who will do better? Latitude tilt, okay? And that's why in, in a lot of table, they will just have latitude tilt. They will tell you, here is the latitude tilt radiation. So basically radiation on a plate tilted at latitude angle. Beta is L. What is the radiation on that plate? Because they know that that's what people will set it at. Okay. Now this equation 
is very important because it's written wrong in the book. Okay, what is this equation? This equation trying to find out the length of the day. Okay, so the hour angle for sunrise and sunset. So in, in the book, they are calling it HS. That's not wrong. That's the nomenclature in the, our book. It's called HS. We called our angle HS. But what's wrong is this part. So rather than having minus 10 L, 10 delta, he had 10 L divided by 10 delta and you have plus or minus over here. So it's totally wrong in the book and it's totally correct in here. Okay, so what this is telling us? It's telling us that if you want the hour angle, again, HS in our book, if you want the HS for sunrise and sunset, what time does the sun rise? It is cosine minus one minus 10 L, 10 delta. So if you know your L, your latitude in Tulsa at 36, and you know your delta, that's, are you doing it for March, February? You know, you put the, de the delta, you'll be able to find out exactly when is the sun rising. Now, if you know the time for the sunrise, you can put it in the equation for the AS, the solar azimuth angle, and you can find the location too. When does the sun come? Okay. So this, so again, if you, I hope that people are listening because sometimes I, I have this in the exam and then they use the equation in the book and then they do it wrong. And they tell me, I just use the equation in the book. And I say, well, I told you the equation in the book was wrong. So mark it now in the book. What, what, Denver, what? pages this equation and it should say HS and it should be cosine minus one and it has 10 L over 10 Delta, which page is it? Should be in chapter six. After he do the azimuth angle and latitude angle, he should make the, which page? Is there the equation 6.25 in book? 6.25, what page is that? What page is it? 129 in mine. Correct, equation 6.25. Equation 6.25 on page 129. Yes. Well, in, see, in, in page one, 129, right? Yes, sir. Page 129, he has it as minus 10 L over 10 delta, and that is wrong. It's it's exactly what you're looking at over here. Because I minus one minus 10 L time 10 delta, okay? So that is uh, the length of the day on a horizontal surface. Now, if that surface is tilted, rather than the horizontal surface, that surface is a little bit tilted. Let's make it like 30 degree tilted up, like he's sticking up a little bit. You think his day will be longer than the horizontal surface or the same or more? What do you think? If he's tilted a little bit to the south, will his day be longer or shorter or the same? It should be a shorter day if the sun is coming from behind, which happened in the summer. So in the summer, a tilted blade will not see the sun immediately. The sun needs to come a little bit so that he can see it. That's in the summer. But in the winter, if the sun is coming in front of him, it doesn't really matter. So that's why he is saying this, that actually in order to be, this, this, this is just an arrow, this thing, don't worry about this. I will just like point. There is another equation called WS prime, which is basically saying, well, yes, this is okay, but you should also do minus 10 L minus beta, latitude minus tilt. 
So when you tilt yourself 10 degree up, it's as if you reduce your latitude from 60 to 50, for example. So here in Tulsa, when we are, our latitude is 36, if we tilt our plate 20 degree, our collector will feel as if he's like 36 minus 20. He would be as if he's sitting at latitude 16. So this is basically saying that, go ahead and calculate it from this equation, that's WS, but also calculate it from this one. And whoever has shorter time, this is the one that you should choose which is basically saying that in the summer, it will be shorter on the tilted plate, but in the winter, it will not make difference. All right, make sense? So if WS turned out to be a uh, 75 degree, I'm, I'm gonna use this equation and WS, and when I did cosine minus one and I had my calculator at degree, and said cosine minus one, this number, it turned out to be 75 degree. What time is the sunrise? If the hour angle at sunrise is 75 degree, what time is the sunrise? 75 divided by, by 15, right? I need to turn every 15 degree to one hour, right? So 75 divided by 15, how much is that? That's five. So when is the sunrise? Seven o'clock, excellent. Because our angle is measuring it from noon. So five hours from noon. So it's gonna rise at seven o'clock. And if the hour angle turned out to be 90, then sunrise is exactly at six o'clock, 6 a.m. 90 divided by five, that's six degree, six hour. And so six hour from noon, sunrise will be at 6 a.m. and sunset will be at 6 p.m. Solar time. Will it be exactly my watch? No, my watch is standard time. So I need to turn the solar time to standard time. So that is a common problem that I like to give so that I make sure that you know how to track the day on the solar collector. I tell you, find out the sunrise and sunset in whatever, Tulsa, Oklahoma, on February 1st. So you February 1st, you come here and you find what's delta. What's that? You know, the city. <laughs> <coughs> you do the omega s, whatever degree you divide over 15, and that would be the time from solar noon. And then you use the equation for converting solar time to standard time, that long equation, okay? And that's how you could be able to calculate exactly what time on your clock will the sunrise would be. Very good. So, we now we know how to calculate the radiation. We know exactly where to use, where is the sun. And then you can actually calculate the, or write a, a program that track those mirrors then. Because if you know where the sun and you know where is the tower that's receiving it and how far, where is this thing is with this to him, you can put the, the mirror. Now the mirror is controlled by two angles too. The mirror has a tilt and the mirror has an azimuth angle. And if the sun is coming from, from here and the collector is there, I need to be sitting in between them. So my azimuth angle should be basically between the two of them so that when he come, go this way, right? So you can write the code that will keep those mirror moving so that this thing always get the radiation from it. Okay, those guys over here, huh? Those are sitting, every one of them is sitting on a 2D tracking system by itself. And the receiver is this. So that dish engine, usually it have a Stirling engine over here. If you remember it from Sermo one, something. So a Stirling engine over here will, will basically turn the heat into uh, electricity directly. So this one is like, this is a thermal power plant where this is the furnace that will, will heat the molten salt and the molten salt will come into those tanks and the water will go to those tanks, get heated, become vapor, vapor go to turbine, condense, become water, go back. A ranking cycle is sitting on the floor and the molten salt is going up and down between the furnace, the storage, the furnace, the storage. And then in the storage, he can stay hot for hours after the sunset. Sun could disappear, but the molten salt is still hot in the tower, in the tank and the water go get heated, become vapor and leave the tank as, as vapor. Okay, 
So obviously this is expensive. This is expensive. This is a little bit cheaper. First of all, those huge troughs, right? And you can see those are people. Okay, so you can see how large those thing is compared to a human. And and the, the water will go, huh? or the liquid, the cool, the, the heating fluid will go in this pipe back and forth, back and forth until it become really hot, right? And, and, and people who are the environmental group that care about birds, they hate this because birds can get barbecued, but they are okay a little bit with this because I mean, it's hard for the bird to go into the, and even when you go into this one, it's not as hot as going through, through this, this tray basically, when you come in that place. Right? So a cheaper version of this, because this is a little bit also expensive to make that parabolic trough, right? A cheaper version is this. You can see that this is a bunch of mirror, flat mirror. And they are just at a different angle, but together they are as if they are parabolic trough. What's the purpose? The sun come this way, and every one of them had the radiation here. And you see this place is so white, not because it has a lamp over there, it's because uh, the radiation make it so hot that it's it's white from hotness. You know how the iron, when you put it in the furnace, first is like red, then orange, then yellow, then become white when it's really, really hot. To the extent that there is like a chart, color chart that you can look to the chart and you can tell how hot the iron is in the furnace just by comparing the color. So that's how hot it can get. So, so all those are thermal, huh? Like we heat liquid and then we use the liquid into either heating, like turning a sterling engine or using a ranking cycle underneath, huh? But there is also, and those are the efficiencies that you should expect. Dash engine was a sterling engine, the solar tower, the parabolic trough, the linear. So it, it go with the price, right? So I mean this, a station like this is like maybe $2 billion to build. Or something like this. It's like really huge. And and then it gets cheaper and cheaper, but the efficiency also drop as you go down. Okay, now the there is also another way to to get convert that energy from the sun, which is photovoltaic directly. Okay, so we can just put photovoltaic panels and that radiation turn into electricity. Okay, but you can see how the efficiency is, is pretty low compared to something like this. Okay. And there's something also called thermoelectric, which is just like the heat, the infrared radiation heat. Like you can put it on your hand. Actually, just last week, one they, they just said which which in which university? North Carolina. Some university they met. Basically, clothes that like wearable when you wear it, it can power basically your uh, your electronics just from your heat of your hand. So just the heat is enough to generate the electric current from the other term. Okay, so so for all all those devices, huh? They will perform better if they have tracking system, and the ultimate thing is. Uh, 2D tracking. So two axis tracking, you tilt, you tilt and you rotate. So you have control over the azimuth angle of the plate and you have control over the tilt angle. This is, he's saying the worst is like just fix it tilt. You put it on top of your roof all year long at one angle. And this is a little bit better where, where you do what? You are, you are fixing the you are fixing the tilt, but at least you can you can track the sun. Can track the azimuth angle of the sun. So this is one x tracking. One x tracking to x tracking, no tracking. Okay. So something like this. You know, this would be two x tracking. So it can rotate. And this actually, I think I remember last time I landed before COVID in Indianapolis, the airport. Parking lot of the airport is covered with those photovoltaic panel and in yen. And so what is the optimum angle here? Latitude tilt, right? 
the optimum tilt angle if they're gonna sleep it in the airport all year long the best angle is latitude tilt and you should make them facing south okay we we will talk about their uh, structure how why is looking like this next time actually i i remember i i went in 2015 to edward air force base that's where they do the all the missile tests over there and they had big area that's completely covered with those guys and so this is what do you think one x tracking two x tracking what do you think look like one x tracking because the the way the floor is sitting there see like one small piece and big piece so the whole thing is just sitting on sitting on this x axis and it just go like this Okay. So the question is, how could you determine whether this is, if someone, if some contractor said, I'm gonna, rather than building it like Indianapolis, like this airport and have it fixed, let's build it this way. It will cost you more because of all that cement and stuff and the tracking mechanism and the motors that will run them, but it's really worth it. Yeah, you should pay the extra $10 million for us so that we can do it with the, should you do it or not? You need to figure out how much, how much this is gonna get you. So how do we do this? There are those table and I have a, a nicer table that I'm gonna send it to you in the, in the homework. I just couldn't find it for the notes. But this table, yeah, and you can get them from the web too. But this table is for Tulsa. See latitude 36, longitude 95. And this whole table up here is a flat plate collector facing south at fixed tilt. So all this is fixed tilt. And the next is one X tracking, one X is tracking. So the number that we need to compare is the number from here and the number from there and see the difference between them and figure out, well, how much will the tilted guy, the one X tilt, one X tracking, will give us more than the fixed one and see is it worth it or not. So for this is done for every month, huh? January, February, March. But the thing is why I'm having all this blue line because the guy who did this didn't tap the numbers. And so the month labels are a little bit shifted compared to the number. So if you want the year average, which really what we should care about, it's the last column, that's the year average. Okay. So now for a fixed tilt, there is zero, that's horizontal surface. 90, that's a vertical wall. Latitude, which mean, what's latitude mean? It means 36, the tilt is 36. And there is latitude minus 15 and latitude plus 15. So 36 minus 15 and 36 plus 15. So they do the table like this because they know that latitude tilt is really what people want because it makes sense. So if you go to latitude tilt and you go to the average, huh? you go all the way up till here and you figure out what's the average. The average is 5.1, 5.1, what exactly? What's the unit? The unit is kilowatt hour per meter square per day kilowatt hour per meter square per day, 5.1. If you leave one meter square huh, for a whole day, he will get 5.1 kilowatt hour during that day. Yearly average at latitude tilt. Now, if we buy the one that is can track the sun, one axis tracking, flat plate collector, with a north-south axis. So he's sitting north-south, but he's going this. He will get 6.5. 6.5 compared to 5.1. So now I need to go back here and say, well, this area he's saying it's three by two, three meter by two meter. Each unit is three, two, three by two. So now I, I can figure out if I get this guy fixed, I'm gonna get 5.1 times six kilowatt hour per meter square per day. And if I buy the one that's moving like this, this number will shift to 6.5. So
So I'm gonna get 6.5 per meter squared then 6.5 times six, right? Per meter square per day, multiplying by the number of days per year, 365, multiply by the number of year that this thing is gonna last. Let's assume 10 years project. That's how many extra kilowatt hour I'm gonna get from this compared to this one. Then you would figure out, well, does this pay the bill? The extra whatever million dollar they're gonna make me charge or not? Okay, so he's saying the upgrade will yield the following, 6.5 minus 5.1 kilowatt hour per meter square per day time the area. Okay, time and efficiency and, and because that falling radiation is not the electricity coming out, you're gonna be selling the electricity, not the instant radiation. So six is, is too low because obviously you can buy them right now with 20%, but like assuming worst case scenario ever, 6% efficiency, time the price of the kilowatt hour, time the number of days per year. So it turned out to be $18 per year at this efficiency. Of course, efficiency get higher, that number, let's say 12%, you get $36 per year for each unit. Time the number of years it will survive, and that's how much money you will get from each. Make sense? Yes. Very good. So one should be 184 for 10 years, one should be 552 for 30 years. If the system can be uh, warranted to 30 years. Minus any operating costs. Well, you could say that maybe that 6% is an overall efficiency that take into account the operating costs uh, the labor that will go and check on it, the motor that will get replaced from time to time. Right. Very good. So, let's take 15 more minutes and then I'll give you a 15 minutes rest, okay?